brother! Man, Jay, so a few weeks ago you talked about Big Hero 6, and I have not been able to stop thinking about it since. Translation, I just keep watching it over and over again. Harry, baby. Ha, never, and I mean never, does that get old. But one thing I only just noticed or took particular interest in is these kites or maybe blimps floating above the city. Today, we're going to find out just what they are. Let's start by laying a little bit of groundwork, because when you first watch this movie, it's not totally clear just where we are. It looks a lot like San Francisco, but it's called San Francisco, and very fittingly has a very Tokyo vibe to it. This is because, according to art director Scott Watanabe, the movie takes place in an alternate future in 2032, where after the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, the city was rebuilt using Japanese architectural techniques that allowed for flexibility and movement. And in case you are unaware, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake is considered the deadliest natural disaster in US history. And just one of the most significant earthquakes of all time due to the vast amount of scientific knowledge that came from studying its sheer size. And it's called the San Francisco earthquake, but it probably should be called the West Coast earthquake because it was literally felt across the entire country. But specifically the San Francisco earthquake because it knocked down 80% of San Francisco. This is starting to feel a little depressing. Back to Big Hero 6. -la 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 -la. After the city was rebuilt, it was also renamed to San Francisco as a nod to the blend between the American and Japanese architecture. Which brings me back to what we're actually here to talk about today, the blimps. When I first saw these, I actually just thought they too were kind of a nod to Japanese culture. And to be honest, I actually thought of them more as kites than blimps, and if you want to be technical, and you know I do, specifically the Koinobori kites or wind socks. The these socks are amazing! Which, after a little more research, I found out that kites in Japanese culture are very much a thing. Kites were first introduced to the Japanese by Buddhist missionaries who used them as a symbol for religious holidays or celebrations. The Japanese quickly got creative with them, though, and figured out ways to lift materials to workers on top of buildings that were under construction, and even used them as a form of psychological warfare by flying kites over enemy camps with noisemakers on them, so soldiers thought they were under attack in the middle of the night. Which sounds super miserable. Who would have thought you could make kites be so diabolical? It's like how you can't say Bubbles angry. Bubbles! <laughs> but remember when you were a kid and you got a kite and just tried to even get it to like stay in the air for 10 seconds? Yeah, well just remember that when you couldn't get the kite to stay in the air, the Japanese were over there using them to build buildings. So yeah, none of that has anything to do with Big Hero 6, it just proves that kites are very interesting and very prevalent in Japanese culture. But again, back to Big Hero 6. I am not fast. My first thought was basically just like, kites, Japan, America! That's a cute nod. Or maybe it was even something like culture meets capitalism. Like the kites were kind of a cool nod to like the ancient Japanese ways, but also served as modern day billboards, which would be a cool reference to maybe modern day Tokyo, which is known for being lit up. Honestly, if that's all it was, I totally would have been satisfied and thought that it was a really cool idea, but it continues to get even more interesting. So in the movie, you can pretty clearly see a propeller spinning in the middle of the kite, and my thought was that it had something to do with keeping the kite in the air. Because that's how flight works, right? Like, propeller equals flight. Like, I could build a plane easy, put a pinwheel on the front of my car, and it's just a matter of speed. The problem with that, though, is what kind of kite needs a power source to stay in the air? Doesn't that ruin everything that's great about kites? Well, here's where things get really cool. The kites themselves don't need a power source. In the movie, the kites are the power source. Remember, this film takes place in 2032, where there is illegal underground robot fighting and a group of college friends who all seem to have casually created, you know, like what would be world-changing technology. So why not have the entire city run by wind turbines that float quietly above the city? Man, kites are cool! But seriously, what a super creative way to like integrate ancient Japanese culture with futuristic technology. Except these are not futuristic or even fictional. They are actually real things. A company called Alta Eros Energies found a way to harness the consistent and powerful energy from high altitude 
Altitude wins. And it's like literally exactly what we are seeing in Big Hero 6, you know, minus like the one child genius and vinyl marshmallow slash superhero. I have some concerns. In their promotional video on their website, they describe the benefits by calling out, and I'm serious, windmill technology. Like, how awesome is it that we live in a world where there's somebody other than bird watchers who have a problem with windmills? Like, we're not even mentioning fossil fuels. We're calling out the thing that spits in the face of fossil fuels. <laughs> Stupid land-based windmills. What a dumb idea. But honestly, after you've heard about these kites, windmills do seem dumb. These kites can be deployed anywhere, are cheaper to make, produce more energy, track weather, extend cell an internet service and you don't have to clear any land to place them. Man, kites are cool! I am so sold on this idea and honestly hats off to Disney for including such a cool idea that wasn't even specifically referenced in the movie that works on like six different levels. Ha! You see what I did there? Six. But guys, for my question of the day, what do you think of this new windmill technology? And also over on our gaming channel, we just launched a new Pokemon Nuzlocke challenge. Be sure to check that out. And if there are any other games you'd like to see us play, be sure to leave that in the towel section down below. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to check out more Big Hero 6 action from us, we have a theory right here that discusses whether or not Tadashi is still alive. And if you'd like to check out our gaming channel, you can just click right here. But Jay, that is everything I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.